This video explains how to use Puppeteer to interact with a browser, whether it's Chromium or Firefox. Let's begin, but make sure to hit the like button in case you enjoyed, and subscribe to not miss new content. To get started, we should be familiar with the API that Puppeteer exposes, in order to allow interacting with a browser. This API is practically an object created by Puppeteer, and represents the browser we work with. We usually name this object as the browser instance. As part of the API, the browser instance provides methods to manipulate the browser, much like a real user. Also, it provides events we can register, and they are emitted in different scenarios, as a result of manipulation we perform on the browser. In addition to what we said so far, Puppeteer obviously should have a certain browser instance to interact with. This is actually the reason why the API exposes a method to launch a new browser instance, and another method to connect an instance that already exists. Well, the easiest way to interact with the browser is by launching a Chromium instance using Puppeteer. In order to do so, and assuming the product package is installed, we merely need to use the launch method. Basically what happens is that the launch method initializes an instance at first, and then attaching Puppeteer to that instance. Notice that the launch method is asynchronous, like most Puppeteer's methods, which, as we know, returns a promise. Once the promise is resolved, we get a browser instance that represents our initialized instance. Another thing to pay attention, is that the launch method takes an object for options. Using the options we can configure the browser instance. For example, we can open the DevTools panel for each new tab. We can also configure the viewport. And of course, there are more settings available to be configured, if necessary. As an example, let's enable the DevTools in the options. Then, we just execute the file we created using Node. So now, we can see that a browser instance does open with the DevTools, and it's using Chromium by default. Important to notice that the browser instance remains open, and this reminds us that we should not forget to close it manually, and or adjust the default timeout to a decent value. The next thing we're going to see is the connect method. Sometimes, we want to interact with an existing browser instance. It could be because we use Puppeteer's core package, and so, there is no way around but rather to connect an explicit binary of the browser. It also could be because we merely want to use a remote browser instance. Either way, there is a way to connect an existing instance, and this is what we are about to see. Here we go. Basically the connect method simply attaches a browser instance to Puppeteer. All we have to do is supplying the URL details of this instance. In this example, we are going to set up manually a Chromium instance, and then to supply the WebSocket endpoint of that instance to the method. Just to guarantee that the instance is actually initialized, we are adding a console log to print the value of the browser variable. Great, let's assume now that Chromium is already installed, and simply run it in a remote debugging. This mode will expose a WebSocket endpoint to be used for the WebSocket debugger URL. Well, after running we instantly see that our Chromium instance is truly initialized. Let's go back and run the script we just created. This obviously is not going to work, because we didn't provide to the connect method the WebSocket debugger URL at all. So let's do that and rerun the file. Amazing, now the instance is logged correctly. And finally, let's close the instance to complete the example of the interaction. Another thing to mention is we absolutely could connect an instance in other ways, as long as we have the appropriate WebSocket endpoint. A link will be attached inside the description below to an article that demonstrates an instance creation programmatically, using the Chrome Launcher package. So far the browser binary we interact with, during the examples was Chromium. The obvious question is, could Puppeteer interact with other browsers besides Chromium? The answer is yes. Puppeteer also communicates with Firefox nightly, and now we're going to demonstrate how exactly. First of all, we should be aware of the Firefox remote protocol, which is based on the Chrome DevTools protocol. This protocol allows the integration between Firefox Nightly and Puppeteer, however, it's not totally ready yet and implemented progressively. You can check out the milestone overview to understand what is the progress status. Secondly, it's fairly probable you encountered or heard about the Puppeteer Firefox package before. This package was a prototype to examine the communication of Puppeteer with Firefox's codebase. The thing is that this project is no longer maintained, and as of today, this is not the up-to-date way to interact with Firefox. Having said that, let's demonstrate now how easy it is to interact with Firefox nightly. To get started, we obviously need to fetch somehow the binary of it. 
The intuitive and simple way to fetch it, is installing Puppeteer's package, while setting the Puppeteer product environment variable to Firefox. This, will install the binary of Firefox nightly instead of Chromium. An alternative way, is to use the browser fetcher API instead, thereby downloading and managing the binaries manually on our own. Anyway, after the binary of Firefox nightly is installed, we can finally interact with it. The only different thing we need to do, is setting the product option to Firefox, that's all, and let's open the dev tools as well. Now we are running the script, and, wait for it. Here it is. A browser instance of Firefox Snidely, exactly as we wanted. Basically both the launch and the connect method except the product option, when Chrome is the default product value and Chromium is the default browser binary. So to recap, the type of the browser instance is up to us, but, we need to keep in mind to align the product option with the installed binary. Don't forget to hit the like button in case you enjoy, and to subscribe to my channel.